Jalen Suggs is the guy who you should bank on here. I spoke to a scout before the draft who was so high on Jalen Suggs that it was bordering on Kate Cunningham hype. All right, Mort, let's move to the Orlando Magic because we have to talk about them, I guess. Uh, oh, but they have Jalen Suggs and everything. Like, come on, they, they, they're going to be fun. They're going to be funner than last year. That's true. So let's go into Suggs because that is clearly the bright spot of this team. I don't think anyone... There was a lot of buzz heading into the draft that Orla- that Toronto was considering Scotty Barnes, but... You know, it seemed like there was a clear top four of, yes, you know, Suggs being in that number four spot. Like he had jumped past Kuminga. (laughs) Kuminga had fallen a tier. So it was like the top three guys. And then, you know, you got Cade, Jalen Green, Evan Mobley, Suggs. Toronto takes Scotty Barnes at four. Jalen Suggs falls into Orlando's lap at five. They take him because he BPA and they're very much, you know, they traded all of their good players, basically, or like, you know, all their good veterans. They got rid of Fournier. They got rid of Vooch. They got rid of Aaron Gordon, the trade deadline. So they are embracing a rebuild, take BPA and figure it out from there. They do still have Markel Fultz and Cole Anthony, though. When Cole Anthony, they they got him 15th overall, I believe, last in 2020. So how do you see backcourt minutes shaking out? between those three guys in particular. So we've actually talked about this before. I I don't hate it. I mean, so many of those guys are interchangeable at the one and the two. In fact, all three of them are. So I I just think it works. Like whoever comes off the bench can realistically just back up both of them. They can move around a little bit. It's fine. Like I, I don't think there is this set traditional point guard or this set traditional shooting guard. These are three compo guards who can all play, play both positions. So if you really lock it down, like <laughs> it's 32 minutes a piece. Like if you want to just have, you know, those three players cover two positions, obviously it's not going to work that way. You also have RJ Hampton and all that. But like when you look at Suggs, Cole Anthony and Fultz in particular, Hampton is big enough that I guess he could slide him up to the three if you want to. But no. <laughs> yeah, you know, no, 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 I, I know. He's skinny. I yeah. know. He's it's, uh, 175 pounds. Yeah, well, I mean, we don't know. We haven't we haven't entered Muscle Watch yet. True. So maybe he's up to like a, a nice one eighty five, one ninety, even still. Yeah, he's yeah, like get... the, the fifteen pounds of muscle, right? That yeah. report is is looming. No, but he's I, still going to get crushed at the three if that's yeah. the case. Yeah, and and because of that, you'll need to arrange something. But I just don't. I don't think it matters. What yeah. my point here is, though, sucks over everything is my mentality yes. going in yes uh, and and that's not to take anything away from cole anthony that's not to take anything away from from markel Fultz. jalen suggs is the guy who you should bank on here i spoke to a scout before the draft who was so high on jalen suggs that it was bordering on kate cunningham hype wow i mean i'm not even kidding this and and like this scout went all in on the, the skill set, the aggression, the way that he plays the game, that just how he can turn it on, you know, from the, the backcourt and just go zero to 60 in a matter of seconds. Mm-hmm. Like the willingness to compete. There's a lot of mental factors playing in here that scouts just made, just fell in love with, with Jalen Sox over. So it's not just a floor game, which is really solid, by the way. And he also projects to be a solid defender. It's the fact that he's one of those guys who consistently wants to attack the basket, who consistently is on the prowl for production. Those guys, Brian, they usually make good NBA players. I mean, there yeah. are very, very few who don't make it when they're wired that way. So it's it's a combination of having an elite athleticism, a very good feel for the game, having on-ball creation, on-ball abilities, a shot, a perimeter shot, has a, a well, has a decent floor game when it comes to court vision. Like, remember, he's not a traditional one. And then he's just wired to, I I am going to cram this ball down your throat every single time I can. Mm-hmm. Now, the backlash against him was, well, he didn't really stand out statistically. Yeah, but he was playing on an absolutely loaded Gonzaga team. It doesn't matter. He came in as a freshman and let that team to like, so many ridiculous victories where you were just watching those games and you went, well, you know what? Jalen Suggs did that one tonight. Like that yeah. wasn't Corey Kisper. 
that was that was freshman Jalen Suggs leading the way, just filling in seamlessly, handing the ball left and right and taking it to down, down the middle of the lane. He's their guy. This is the this is the guy that they should focus on. So Suggs first, and then everything else in line. Yeah, if I remember correctly, Sam Vecini of the Athletic, I think, had Suggs at number two on his board. Yes, I think several people did, and then they started overthinking it later on. Um, like when I and when I say overthinking it, like more people started having him, like at the five spot, like even below mm-hmm. Kaminka, and mm-hmm. most had them around four. Yeah. I, 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 okay. Like. I could see that because Jalen Green just got a lot of hype, and I really love Jalen Green. I don't think you can really go f- wrong in that two to four order, but mm-hmm. I do think it's worth mentioning that Sucks could easily have been the second p- second pick in the draft, and no one, nobody should have batted an eye. Like he's that right. good. So, yeah, I, I think Orlando got an absolute steal in Suggs. I I think Cunningham is going to win the Rookie of the Year, but I mm-hmm. think Suggs would be the runner up. Oh, interesting. Yeah, He's I mean, good, Brian. He's really good. It, I'm going to be fascinated to see how these minutes shake out because, you, as you mentioned, you have RJ Hampton, you have Gary Harris, who I hope the Magic just do the same thing that Houston is with John Wall, where they're just like, we're just going to keep you on ice because we don't want you to get hurt. Yeah, just just don't worry about showing up this year, Gary. We're going to suck. We don't don't waste any. Don't put any extra mileage on your knees. With, for this team, we're good. We, we're covered in the backcourt. Yeah. Um, I mean, they have Michael Carter Williams, who's now more of a wing than he has a guard at this point, anyway. So he could slide up to the three. But that's my next question about this team. Where I mean, you have Mo Bamba, Wendell Carter Jr. are going to split yep. the minutes at center. You have Jonathan Isaac, who is hopefully back and healthy. Oh, and they also have Robin Lopez for whatever reason. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. You have Jonathan Isaac, who, uh, if he's healthy, he's going to take most of the minutes at the four. The three spot, I think, is the big question. Because you can split it up between probably Terrence Ross and Chumo Keke. So which one do you think is going to be starting for them? And how do you see those minutes shaking out really at the three and the four behind Isaac? I think they're going to start Terrence Ross and give him a lot of shots and then flip him for a first rounder at the deadline, uh, opening the door for OKK to take over in the second half of the season at the three. I would like that. Yeah. I'm actually surprised they didn't flip Ross at last year's deadline when they had their yeah. fire sale. Yeah. Um, or last year, it was this March, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> last right. season. Um, yeah. So I think this is, this is the season to do it. I I was the, it, this never materialized, and I hate the fact that it didn't because now it can't be. But I was looking at a deal go for him going to Milwaukee for DJ Wilson and someone else. I don't remember, but mm-hmm. I like the parameters of it. Um, Isn't that I what think, they used to get PJ Tucker instead? Uh, I think it was like so, DJ maybe. Augustine, right? Yeah, it could be. Yeah, I don't remember the package. I just remember yeah. thinking Terrence Wa- Ross would be fantastic on Milwaukee if he's just coming yeah. off the bench. But I think for him coming to a team that is in the championship hunt, maybe we just talked about Miami. Frankly, Terrence Ross would be a very interesting piece for for the Heat. I just I don't know if they have the salaries to make it work. There are a couple of things there, but yeah, I, I think they definitely think- start Ross and then give him shots, make sure he's in there to spread the floor. And then by the deadline, it's like, all right, let's go get you to a contender that has like a protected first round pick or whatever. And then, Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll we'll, we'll pivot to OKK from there. Yeah, I'm trying to think of trying to figure out a team where like Portland, he'd be nice. But your Sixers, he would be really nice. I know. But yeah, all of these teams, it's like, how do you find the salary? You know, Indiana could be one, especially now that. TJ Warren is hurt. They're still hurt <laughs> out yeah. indefinitely. They have Jeremy Lamb at 10.5 million. So like, I mean, if they are so incentivized to make the playoffs that they, they could do like Jeremy Lamb and a protected first for Terrence Ross. I'm, I'm going to look at the Nuggets uh, Spo track page because mm-hmm. Terrence Ross in Denver. That would be fun too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the well, actually, they do have some decent matching contracts. Mm. It would be uh, Jermichael Green. Yeah, Jermichael Green and a pick, maybe. 
but they just re-signed him, if I remember correctly. So he's not even eligible until December 15th. No, no, this so, will be at the deadline. Like, yeah, I'm not yeah, saying yeah. now. I'm saying at the deadline either way. Yeah. Um, no, but it's interesting. Like for Honestly, I actually thought that he would also make a good fit for the Celtics, and then they traded mm. for Fournier instead. Um, yeah. He, like, he would be fun there, just spotting off of the attention that the two Jays are getting. Josh Richardson, they can move Josh, him. Yeah, they, they could. That would actually yeah. be an interesting piece. But I think Orlando is going to assist on getting a first back, which they, I think they should. Yeah, for I mean, because he's under contract for this year and next year. His salary yes. goes down next year. It's only eleven point five million, and yeah, he's good. He can easily be that microwave scorer off the bench. Like this is, you know, Jordan Clarkson is earning this type of money. Like this is the price you pay for that high end. Like, I I don't think he's going to be in the six man of the year race, but especially if he starts, he definitely won't be. But like he, you know, he, he could be that like fringe top five six man of the year. Right. type candidate especially on a good team correct so i i yeah i think he's gonna move elsewhere and then it's okay okay spot moving forward uh and if they, they just hit the lottery oh, well actually i was about to say if they if they get another three in in future drafts but they also got one this year by the bulls yep um so uh, it's a good question like will, will franz wagner be ready i don't i don't know Mm -hmm. Maybe they just have him waiting in the wings and like, okay, okay, is one of those uh, like stepping stone players who are there for a couple of years and they move on until someone else like Franz is, is ready. I don't know. Like, yeah. That's going to be, I just, I, I really have no clue as to whether or not Wagner is ready for, for the right. NBA. Right. Yeah. I mean, the three spot definitely looms as their biggest question mark or like three, four, although they also have Mo Wagner as well. So Maybe you split time between Franz and Mo, Isaac. Uh, God, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you can do a Wendell Carter Jr. and Mo Bamba together. It's going to be terrible. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I think that is the big concern with them. And right now I'm looking at, at FanDuel again. So this is their over under regular season wins is 21.5. So the market is very, very low on this Magic team. I would guess, uh, yeah, they're below Detroit. Detroit's at 23.5. Cleveland's at 27.5. So I, without looking at every single team, I'm going to go ahead and guess that is the lowest of any team in the East. Do you think the market is slightly too low on them or is that appropriately priced? No, I think they're low. I think they're low. Um, like Wendell is going into his fourth year now, and I think he's better. I think mm -hmm. he he needed the change of scenery from Chicago, and I think he displayed some more aggression in in Orlando as a scorer. Um, I wouldn't be shocked to see him take a significant step up. I also am that high on Jalen Sucks that I think <laughs> like that's going to work out. Uh, Cole Anthony to me is someone you, you know, everyone seems to be sleeping a little bit off. You, like, you already talked about it, but like, why are we expecting him not to take a step? Right? Like, he's going to get better. He was. He, he got he better was, in the second half of last season. He did exactly, and and like for, when you look at his raw numbers, like yeah, the production level wasn't fantastic, nor was his efficiency. Yeah. But that doesn't really matter because the players he had around him for a vast majority of the season was kind of in turmoil. It was a little bit weird. Like now he has a Jalen Sucks alongside him. Now he has a Wendell Carter Jr. who's very unselfish. Not saying the Vooch isn't. Vooch was one of the best passing centers in the league. But Vooch also demanded a lot of shots. Carter doesn't to the same extent. So that means that more opportunities are going to be funneled through Cole Anthony. So yeah, I, I think that's low. Right, I think that's really low. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if they they even broke thirty. Wow. Okay, that's interesting. I wouldn't go that far. I mean, oh. they are they are currently tied, as best I can tell, with OKC as having the lowest over under in the league. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked. It, it comes down also to when uh, Jonathan Isaac returns. Yeah. Yeah. But Isaac I mean, is going to have a huge regular season impact. Yeah. Assuming he stays healthy. Assuming he stays healthy. Yeah. And then, of course, there's Markel Fultz as well. I just, I think 
people are sleeping on the Magic a little bit. Do I expect them in the playoffs? No, no, oh God, no, no, not at all. But it wouldn't surprise me whatsoever if they came out and had 30 wins. And look, hell, this might be controversial. I wouldn't even be super surprised if they had a better season than the Cleveland Cavaliers. Yeah, I mean, they're both similar in the sense that they're like both relying on a ton of young guys Mm -hmm. and as such are probably going to suck. I think Cleveland is slightly more developed, like, you know, their prospects are just a little bit older and have played together for a longer period of time. So you feel slightly better about them than you do Orlando because, you know, Suggs is going to be a rookie. Hampton didn't get a ton of minutes in his rookie season, especially when he played with Denver. He played more once he arrived in Orlando, but still we're talking about, you know, he played 888 total minutes last year. You know, Isaac's been hurt for a while. Fultz missed most of last year. So I think there's just a lot of uncertainty. And then when you overall, when you're relying on this many young players, you're typically a pretty bad team. So, you know, 21.5 does feel slightly low to me. But at the same time, like some team always finishes in the teens pretty much every year. Oh, so yeah. Like, oh yeah. That's not going to go away. I yeah, just think so, it, it, there's a chance that that could be Cleveland. Yeah. I mean, hell, Detroit last year was 20 and 52. Yeah. They were the worst team. In the, and that's only a 72 game season. So we add 80, you know, 10 more games to that mix. Orlando was 21 and 51 last year. But that was after, I mean, they completely fell apart after the trade deadline. So I, I don't think. I don't see them flirting with 30. I could, you know, I could see 25 and 57, 26 and 56, something like that. Like I would probably choose the over there, yep. but I don't feel super strongly about it. And hell, I'm just saying I wouldn't be shocked at 30. If they, I also wouldn't be surprised if they finished below 30, but yeah, I would yeah. be shocked if they finished below 21 and a half. Yeah. 